Hey everybody, happy Friday. A Friday comes around, it's like it takes longer to get to a Friday in COVID than normally. So happy Friday. You're watching Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific. You can call in for questions, 323-524-2599. I always do that with a little dance. I don't know why. Um, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett, and of course our Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast, and also our YouTube page, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruna, where you can see this show as well as all the other past shows since 2009. Yes. Wow. It's that old. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining us. I'll go around the room really quick and then we'll introduce our wonderful guest and our little mini guests. Um, <laughs> via Zoom, I have Cheryl Murphy. Hi, Cheryl. Ladies, hi. hi. Great to hi. see all of you. Great to see you. Great to be here. And then we have Ronnie Loiza. Hi, hey. Ronnie. Good evening. Happy Friday. Is it a full moon? Gotta not, ask yet. No. No, not, not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Um, and then back in the studio, we have Roxanne Rosen. Hi, everybody. Hey, nice to see you again. <laughs> Roxanne's back. I'm Mara back. sends her love. And oh, then no. from, and Tony's running the board right now. And then after Tony Amisha. leaves, Amisha will be running the board. She's new to us. So hello, woman power, more hello. women power. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> then we, um, um, and then, you know, of course, to my left, we have Cara Noble. Back. She's Yay. back. Lovely She's Cara. back. And then, uh, without further ado, um, I have someone I, I've met through Roxanne, um, not Roxanne Rosen, but Roxy. I just forget her name for a second. Roxy, Roxanne <laughs> Harris. I'm like, wow, ah, because I never use her last name. Um, we, I, we met a couple of years ago. Now it's been that long. And she has a dog business called WeHo Wags. And Casey Montoya, who is our guest tonight Hi. from KTLA and her um, organization, Fixing Fido's. I mean, she just likes to show her boobs. Always, off. always. I know, but you have yeah, to lift them up a little does. bit, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 All I see is yes. her, her boobs are nice. I have to they get a different really bra. Are. Sorry. Um, thank you for my thank you. You're welcome. That. Um, but Casey, um, you know, always was at Roxanne's, and um, we just sort of became friendly. Yeah. And I'm aunties to I'm an auntie to her two mini babies. This is Annabelle, Annabelle, oh, and then we have. Roxy, oh. Roxy Montoya and Annabelle Roxy. Montoya. So they're joining us. I'm so annoying, I know. I know, no, no, <laughs> no they're so not. cute. Um, you know, it's so funny because, um, you know, I didn't even think about asking her to be on the show. And I think one day I was over Roxy's and I'm like, and I think Roxanne said, why don't you ask Casey to be on your show? And I'm like, all right. Hey, you want to be on my show? Yes. I'm sure. like, awesome. <laughs> wow. So, um, yes, yeah, so she's here. Happy Friday. Happy, Happy Friday. Friday. I'm even going to be up like almost past my bedtime for you. Oh, Seriously? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that's I'm like right. An, because I'm like an 8.30 p.m. or. Well, but oh, you get up wow. at the crack of dawn from like the KTLA stuff. They've got you all over town at all hours doing stuff. Well, not anymore. I get to be in studio now, but oh. that's early. I get up at 3 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Oh, oh sweet. When my neighbors are still strolling in from the club. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking Walk my shame. dogs at the same time that they're coming home walking their dogs nice uh, nice <laughs> different that jokes like different folks i'm there sure that's go. a use of euphemism for something <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely and you know and you know i i was telling i, mean, I didn't tell her but she, you know it's like i said it's, it's a lesbian show but it's not a lesbian show i mean i'm not lesbian <laughs> i tried it didn't work i gave it a chance it <laughs> and you know and of course you know just because um, Casey brought flannel <laughs> to appeal to those women out there that are into that kind of. That's because <laughs> Roxanne, our mutual friend, told me that I should wear flannel. For lesbians. Flannel? Roxanne no. is stereotyping. Is no. Stereotyping. You, no, no, no. No, 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 not anymore. Look nice in LA. No, no, back in the day, the but okay, I'm going to get so in trouble for this, but back in the day, the stereotypical butch women were like um Birkenstocks, yeah, and usually Ooh. with and socks. Flannel. I thought that was like or Oregon hippies because I lived there for a long time. Well, you know, it's the same dress code. Well, exactly, lesbians and some lesbians and Oregon hippies mix and match. <laughs> it's like, and New Hampshire, oh, New Hampshire too. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm from the East Coast and um, not that East, but I'm New York, and and lesbians always. I mean, I grew up with les. I didn't grow up with lesbians. I saw them. I didn't know I was one at the time. And they were very beautiful, stylish women. I guess back in the day, I mean, they were lipstick lesbians. Um, and then there were the butch women. And I'm not 
really saying anything about the butch women. It's not my scene, but I empower everyone to be who they are. <laughs> I won't sleep with you, though, but I empower <laughs> you to be who you are. Um, so, Casey. Yes. <laughs> First of all, I Should have I to say. Should I be nervous, say, Roxanne? No, no, don't worry. Okay. Just look at me. You'll okay, be good. Okay. I, you know, I posted, you know, I usually post, and I thought, oh, I'm going to post Casey's picture, and I posted your picture, and everyone's like, oh, my God, I love her on KTLA. Oh, and good. And the others are, oh, my God, she has beautiful eyes I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> so just everyone, it is, that photo is true to life. I mean, that oh. that is her eye color, so there's nothing in the eyes that are enhanced. She is that beautiful. Oh, you're so sweet. May I ask Casey a quick question? Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, so here's the Latina in the room asking a blonde with blue eyes. Now, my grandmother had gray eyes and blonde hair. Ooh, so great. where'd you get the Montoya? An ex. Mm. Oh, oh, you married into it. There's a story. I earned it. <laughs> <laughs> so Nice one. So now that you have a Latino I last name. gray eyes, though. That's like gray like a cat gray? They're grayish blue. Oh, okay. My, my grandmother on my dad's side. That, that's the Loiza. Yes, yeah. You know, Loiza's Basque, but... People always wonder. Basque, yeah. huh? Mm. Yeah. Wow. A lot yeah. of Basque people are O negative blood, like me. I'm oh. O a negative too. You're not. I swear my life. I don't Fabulous. even know my. I don't know Actually, my blood they type. Are. You know how rare we are. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the it's the where we where we where we blood pipe. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> it's the O, o I'm negative dark because my mother was Spanish, but with Native American from South America. Oh wow! But everybody else, I have blonde cousins, so. What, do you know their blood types? Wow. I think I'm O. I'm O-O or something like I that. I know. There's only one O. No, yeah, one O. Only one either o. negative or positive. There's a double oh. something. Who What's a double? Is I don't it, even know my blood type. Positive. Isn't that sad? You know what? You're, I'm A negative. And I didn't know I should know, know this, right? But it's weird. Yeah. yeah. In case yeah. something happens. Why aren't we told yeah. at birth? It seems bizarre. Doesn't Shouldn't it be on our birth certificate? Yeah, yes. it should be. And it's not. No. Because I, uh, I looked oh, at yeah. Because oh, it's not going to change. Right. I mean, it's not going to change. But, yeah, I mean, but you can't, like, when you do, like, a blood test mm -hmm. at the doctor. Like they don't the, do it. No, no, it's a special test. You have to. And your insurance more money. Yeah, your insurance that's how doesn't insurance want to pay for it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it sounds weird to me. <laughs> no, but it's just weird. Let's investigate. Yes. <laughs> because if you're Casey, by the way, my husband um, gets up also at two in the morning because he's on KNX. He's a news anchor. So oh, I get what's his to, name? I have to be really what's his name? quiet at night and make sure the cats don't meow. Wait, oh, yeah, I know him. I listen all the time. Who is it? Bob Archer. Oh, yeah. I've listened to KNX oh. for years. I only listen to talk radio and country. And country. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's uh -huh. definitely not a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. There's a lot of them no, out there. There no, is really. a certain section of lesbians that do that. That are like me. And I'm glad you wore flannel because you would absolutely fit in. <laughs> but okay, In the country scene. But speaking of lesbians, okay, uh, for um, just a moment, um, the L word, the new one, Generation Q. Yes. Um, I didn't see the first season. Okay, it wasn't worth seeing. Oh, okay, that's what they tell me. So mm -hmm. I, I'm watching the second season without I, watching the first. Yeah, because oh. nothing changes in. Le it's the same drama carried okay. off from season one to season two. Every lesbian. What started like the drama before 2020, when the party started happening in 2021, it's like it froze and the same drama continued. Okay. It, so it's 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 very s a slow moving, you know, kind of whatever that we're called. We are called. But the, it, it, first of all, I have to say. Jennifer Beals is still hot. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. 100%. Oh, is she? Can we see her? If I were lesbian, she'd be my type. Yeah. Yeah. And I've her met her. Penelope and Cruz. I've met her. And she's still gorgeous oh, in Penelope person. Oh, Penelope Cruz. Oh, my I gosh. I want to see her. She's yeah. my type. She's anyway. beautiful. Um, and Shane, whatever Shane's real name is. Not my type. Who used to be cute. Looks haggard. Oh dear! Like yes. like like haggard. Yes. Like a heroin addict. Really haggard. really bad. Makes Linda Perry look healthy. Mm -hmm. Um and, <laughs> you know Mara's gonna kill you for that. No 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 no. no. <laughs> oh my, just but saying. the rest of the cast, but the only new people, I just don't. You know, I just don't think they're great. So you know, I'm glad that we have something that is on. That's the LGBT plus LMNOP. <laughs> but I have to say, one thing I don't like. Is that okay? I, I have nothing. I mean, like, bi there's bisexuals. It's like I don't, at this point, I've thrown my hands up at. But the polyamorous and the you know the switch hitting, it's like I still don't understand. It's like it makes like the lesbians look like we do anything. Like we do anyone and anything. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Yes. She says I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna yes, tell you something. Yes, she does. <laughs> so there is this poly couple that I'm talking to right oh, now. Of course you are. And 
I've never even thought about being with a couple. Mm. Um, e- multiple at once is fine, but a couple, no. Mm. And I just think that that's weird. I'm like, okay, what sign are you? You're an Aries like me. That's totally understandable. But your partner is a Leo. I don't know any Leo Outrageous. that shares. Outrageous. <laughs> I don't know any Leo that shares. That should be banned. <laughs> I know. So, and I, I'm just wondering if you're married and you're really, really in love with the person, how can you watch them? be with someone else maybe you're bored oh you know you have experience no, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. yeah go ahead. I'm, she I'm, sounds I'm like an authority on i'm like oh she's like i've been bored that's why people, no that's why people do it no but, but i saw that on that show sex life that's all <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's why i'm getting my so speaking as an aries that can be jealous if i'm in love only um if i'm in love there's no way i could see my partner doing anything with anyone else but if I'm not in love, I could care less. I could do things with everyone in a million years. However, I'm I'm intrigued because I actually really want to learn. Mm. I really want to learn mm. how two people that are supposedly in love and just so happy can share a partner. Not saying I'm going to do anything, but just do it for I wanna, research. I just want to yeah, research, 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 yeah, research purposes. I <laughs> don't <laughs> encourage her. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. I, I don't. I mean, when I'm in a relationship, it's a monogamous, monogamous relationship. So am I, yes. I'm me not too. jealous either. But if I'm, if for me, if I'm okay with seeing someone be with my partner, mm, it's tricky. like there's. I must, I, I must be bored. But there's a whole world of people who do it. Yeah. Like as a regular thing. Right. So you should find out why. Okay, so I will tell you the swingers life in Orange County. I have, uh, there are a lot of my friends and I love them to bits and pieces. And they could share their married partner all the time. And it's just completely normal, completely normal. And Roxanne, I love being they around kiss? that. Fascinating. Or do they just do sexual acts? Like every, uh, they'll do everything. And I, I'd be okay with the sex and watching or him watching me, but not kissing. I well, would some do and some That's, don't. Look, I would rather go somewhere where I have newt when I'm completely neutral and be a mm-hmm. voyeur and watch other people do it and I'm not involved. I do oh, find I that sexy. I love being a voyeur. There's would, nothing better than no, that. No, I don't mind watching <laughs> oh. other people do it as long as A, I'm not invited. B, I am not associated with them. But I have no problem. It's like watching a live porn movie. Yes, I'm good that's with like that. the best thing ever. I want to see what Cheryl thinks about that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl's like, don't call on me. <laughs> I think you can need an open mind and trust, and you can do anything with that. Hell yeah. yeah. Look, I'm going to tell you. Play and shoo it. Like, that's you're going to trust answer. that he's not going to fall in love with her? Or she's oh, who cares? Fall in love you know, but, 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 but hold on. Wait one second, though. Let's face it. If that's what you're worried about, then that's something that's within you. But then your relationship's not strong enough to do that if you're worried about that. Correct, because yeah, there's obviously true. a trust issue. There's some. If you don't trust your partner and you don't trust that you can you know, get through this and it's really yeah. just sex, then that's really has something to do within yourself. You gotta start questioning yourself as to why don't I want to do this. But this also has to be one of those things where I know women who have broken up with men because they suggested this. So it has to be like a mutual I wanna know, you have to go to this couple <laughs> because you have to find out if they both like how does the conversation come okay. up where you introduce that into your life it has to be something that you both agree on it's like oh honey i was thinking and then you're like i was thinking the same thing yeah but it can't be like one pressuring the other you need well to, yeah. it, it was you need definitely to serialize the, this for the show yeah exactly. i will so it was definitely the aries that talked the leo into it because an aries on. would have hold that on idea <laughs> i'm going to always bet and i would say 98 percent of the time it's going to be the guy's idea i don't think so yeah, no, not at all. No. I, I get hit on all the time by couples on all the dating apps. With women, right? Women no, no. want me. Hold on, hold on. Well, you're I not. understand that. Thank you. I understand <laughs> that. I women it. will be the, the bait. <laughs> women will approach another woman. But what I'm saying, amongst a couple, before yeah. it goes out to, into actually getting and, pr- and doing the prey and the pounce, who brings it up amongst the couple? I'm going to bet it's the guy first. I don't know in my well, you experiences. Well, have to find that out. I'm at, this is a question that That's I need what, to be answering. In my, yeah. ex- in in my experiences, it's been the women. It's been the women that have talked the guys, told the guys that they have always wanted to try it, and the guys say, okay. That's mm-hmm. what they tell me, the women. How many guys, though, do you think if they did a threesome? Because we're talking about a threesome now. Right. How many guys, straight guys, do you think are open to doing a threesome with another guy? Ooh, that Not is an much. Issue. 
Not many. Because if I, okay, I'm 10%? not. 10%? Right, because I'm not straight. But if I was straight, I would go, okay, woman, fine, okay, whatever. But I'd go, I maybe want another guy. And then he's going to be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, where, Roxanne, where are you meeting these couples? Dating apps? Yeah, all, all Bumble, Tinder, it, it, oh, wow. everywhere. All the dating apps. Do you take the box? <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, there's boxes if you want male, really? female. Or... Yeah, no, I oh. don't. I only choose one gender. I just came back from Arizona. And I'm sorry. Every, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was for work, starting my new business. And literally everybody for my match was a couple. And everyone that swiped right on me that liked me because I could see all my li- likes because I pay for it was a couple. It's w- like 10 times worse than L.A. Wow. Well, because you're in Arizona. <laughs> There's not much to do. <laughs> I bet you those likes would triple if you were in places like Idaho or <laughs> Iowa. OK. <laughs> I'm like, all the L.A. people must be in Arizona right now. Hello. <laughs> and they recognize me. I'm in bum fuck nowhere. There's nothing to do. Let's go on Tinder. Yeah, really? What I should have swiped right in all of them and be like, meet me at this hotel. I right. mean, these people sit on their porches and whittle. I mean, I, like, what, like, that's the there high point of, of their life. in Arizona. <laughs> and New Mexico. Yeah. So, it's very spiritual. I'm changing the <laughs> subject. I'm changing the subject completely. So, Casey Montoya. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I was actually born here in Orange County. Oh, nice. But not, where? Not like the nice part. It was, you know. Where? Well, we lived in Santa Ana. I was born in Orange, the city of Orange. It's I, funny when people don't know that that's a city. That's where I live. Really? Yeah. Where? I live, no- it's technically the city of Santa Ana. Don't but tell me I have a, I have a North Tustin zip code. Okay. I'm on the border of Orange, Santa Ana, and Tustin on that corner. Yeah, I mean, I was a kid. I don't remember when I was, you know, less than 10 years old. And then we lived in. That's Texas. only a few years ago. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a ni- it's a nice part when you border Orange and um, the Austin neighborhood that we lived. Nice. My parents say the neighborhood that we lived in the last time they drove past it is not the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's a little yeah. rundown. And then where did you move from there? We I lived in Texas, ah, which is where I was where? Kind of raised. Where? It was Plano, Plano, Texas, Ooh. near Houston. Oh, I'm right? a Houstonian. Oh, Houstonian. So yeah, this yeah. is what four or five hours north of that. And a yeah, lot, some not. of my family's still there, but that's where I was raised. So I feel like I'm kind of Texas. But I always wanted to come back here. So I but came not back here big for hair. I have never I seen had, you with big hair. I had big hair. Oh yeah. Oh, you, you may have to that, share those photos. You tease it up. You may have to share those photos at some point. Aquanet. I mean, <laughs> Aquanet. <laughs> Aquanet. Those were the days. But it was Aquanet Ultra. It was yes. a pink. I just remember it was the a pink. pink. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was purple. Was it, pur- was it was like no. pinkish purple. Pinkish purple. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, it was so cheap, and it smelled so bad. Yeah. So bad. I was like, but we just, yeah. And then there was like a film in your bathroom. Like yep. A, ooh, it was disgusting. Floor. Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Would you meet I, your ex-husband in Texas or here? In California. Oh. Yeah. So when did you come to California? Or why? When and why? Why? Well, I came to California to go to college. Okay. In my early 20s. And did you do like broadcasting and I stuff? I did. I majored in broadcast journalism. I went to CSUN. And then I was the I was telling my friend Aaron Bender on another podcast this week that I was a brat. Like I was such a brat in college. The teachers were all telling you, um, you know this from your husband being in the journalism b- industry, you have to go to small markets to start out. You, you, oh, you have to start in Palm Springs, 125 yeah. and market. I, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. said to all you of them, the movies. no, oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to get a job here. Like I was just such a, I can't think of it a better word. Like just a no, brat. You are, no, no, but no, you, no. I you bet were, you did though. No, I didn't. You oh, were assertive you and con- you were assertive and confident. I, I was overly confident, and I knew nothing at that point. I just thought, oh, well, I, my mom said yes to everything I've ever wanted, so <laughs> then yes. <laughs> and not financially. She just you know, gave me a lot of confidence. Right. No, I ha- it took me 10 years to get back to L.A. I went to West Virginia, then Palm Springs, Ooh. then Portland, Oregon, just to get back here. Oh, wow. wow. Hey, yes. see, we're in Palm Springs, KESQ or KMIR? It, it was KPSP. CBS 2, the desert's oh. news station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was an intern at KMIR. Oh yeah, and just an intern, just doing papers and whatever. And the the weather guy quit, and they're like, "Who wants to do weather?" And they didn't have live in that. Oh, it was like no. 1998. They still didn't have live. I'm like, "I'll do it." Everybody was laughing. News director said, "Go," and it was like the green screen, me pointing everywhere. Right. The first time but you do it, it's scary. It Very is. Scary. It was hilarious. But yeah, I remember, and and people thought, you know, because I was also in news for a while. Um, you can't go from Palm Springs to wherever. I went to the 56th market, and then I went to San Diego. And then I got out of the biz. Then I got sucked back in, then I got out of the biz. <laughs> so, yeah, when you're naive enough, you think oh, yeah. you can. 
I was a weather girl too, but uh, not with a green screen on the radio, and I couldn't even spell meteorologist. So <laughs> <laughs> I that is no a little idea. hard, though. I was I did the traffic and weather together, girl. Uh, but <laughs> I was actually di- I, my my path was very different. I literally went from nothing to having married a producer, and they needed a girl on this new show with this famous TV host, and I was like. I got a job. Oh, that's awesome. I went from nothing to that. Nice. It's all about who you know. Yeah, it's exactly. very, very unusual. Yeah. I mean, and that's, but it's true in this business. It is about who you know. 100%. 100%. Even if guess? you are an asshole, you can get far based on who Does you know. Does that suck, though? I hear about oh, these yeah. people who are these successful actors and successful people in our business of journalism who people are like, oh, he's a real dick to work with. And I'm like, why does he keep getting hired? Right, there's me. <laughs> I'm very nice to work with. Why don't you hire me? But it's funny because um, bringing up Rox again, Roxanne, we are like two peas in a pod when it comes to scary movies, slashers or whatever. We, you know, we, we meet at her home and we eat and we watch these things incessantly, sometimes double features. <laughs> no one else. They do. I've walked in on it. Yeah. No one else will do this. And it was so funny because we were watching The Purge. With, I think The New Purge. Mm-hmm. And we're watching it, watching it all of a sudden. I don't know. I think she sneezed or something. I'm like, wait a minute. I think that's Casey. And she goes, I <laughs> yeah. thought that was Casey. And then we rewind it. And it was Casey. And then I guess I text her. I'm like, you were looking at you on the purge. But have, I mean, in what you're doing now, have you ever wanted to venture to the other side? No. The reason why we do that, and you also know this from your husband. So a lot of casting directors here in Los Angeles will only hire real news anchors and reporters, I guess, because we have a certain cadence and they mm-hmm. like how we speak. So they'll cast you for like a reporter. Reporter. Exactly. So they'll ask for a reporter or anchor, and then we'll say on the breakdowns, like, real news people only. And so we get hired to do those jobs. And I just did mm-hmm. another one, a movie called 892. It's actually a really good story. Um, and I, I didn't know that I had a scene, like, actually a talking scene with someone. Oh. Because I didn't read all of the stuff. I was just like, oh, I don't remember this audition. It was so long ago. <laughs> and um, show up, and it's – oh, man, I'm going to forget her name now. I know who it is because you told me. It's the one from... She's in Friday Night Lights? Yeah, the the, the redhead-ish. And then she was also in 9-11. And White Lotus? Yeah. What's her name? Connie? Connie. Connie. Not Connie Nielsen. Help, help. Britain. Connie. Connie Britain. <laughs> yes, Connie Britain. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Such a lovely woman. And I'm looking at this woman and I'm like, this is like a big actress. Like, and I'm not an actress. I'm a news person. And I have to do a scene with her. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't even know the lines because I didn't know I had the scene. <laughs> So I was like, shit. And I just learned it really quickly. And she was so professional, so lovely. And then I saw another woman there who, her name is Kate. I watched her on Scandal. And I'm like, these people are, they're famous. I know. I know, but see, you're kind of famous uh, too. No, yes. No. But I yes. thought it was so cool. It is neat to be able to, and I did Ray Donovan. I was on a ton of episodes oh. of that. Ooh. Yeah. I even had my own name. My, it was awful. Sandy Gagich. That's oh. that was that was, yeah. Gagich. What the hell is that? I was, a, I was a sm- like a slimy entertainment reporter. Oh wow, oh, that's Gagich. Really, yeah, but it was that's fun. Great. Like because they want to hire real news people because we can just get it in one take, yeah. maybe two. But it's that's right. only in LA. It drives me in freaking sane when I watch these movies or these TV shows where the person comes out. And all these reporters come running up and yelling with the microphone. I'm like, no news reporter does exactly. that. Exactly. Because they're not going to give an answer. It's just oh, so and stupid. they all stop in the same line, don't they, as well, on the movies? And, they no, they stop. don't go running up to somebody. No. And, 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 and here's the thing. Women reporters, Casey will tell you, don't go out in the field with six-inch stilettos. No, we That's do not. No. Unless you're Wendy Birch from KTLA, and then you do. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a fact. And she rocks it. Does she really? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she Sends does. her to a fire. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she'll bring those shoes in her car. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we don't wear that. And it's always funny, too, to see to watch the camera guys, like, running with the camera. <laughs> and then it's mm-hmm. like, no, that thing is heavy. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. There's This is not real. And I've actually, uh, <laughs> John Singleton, you know, rest in peace, I did a, a movie or a TV series. I can't even remember what it was with him a few years ago. But I, I said, may I correct something that's happening? Ooh. And and I will I will ask the directors. I'm like, hey, just so you know, that's not realistic. And I'm probably overstepping my bounds. But I think they're going for authenticity. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that's not how it works. Oh, no, but really you know what? You can parlay this thing into a separate career as a yes. tech advisor. Good you idea. don't realize that. That'd be good. Nice Ooh. One. As a tech advisor for Auntie these shows. Auntie Gan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) She thinks that's a good idea. (laughs) 
Annabelle. It took me a while. It took a while for Annabelle to warm up to me, but it, it did. <laughs> She's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she bites people. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, good thing. I Wait, didn't go. They're two girls, right? <laughs> yeah, they're two, two females. Uh-huh. Yeah. But speaking of, they're dog? both rescues, right? They're both rescues. Oh. She's a Chihuahua, and the other one is a Chihuahua mix something. I don't know. Mm. She's just perfect. Cool they're both perfect. They are. They Aww. are both perfect. So how did you? How did you acquire them? <laughs> how did you? find you know how have you found fix and fidos um so i as a news reporter for so many years every market i've ever worked in i somehow just was drawn to animal shelters animal stories helping and in palm springs i was the morning anchor we did a weekly adopt a pet segment oh. and we had an 100 percent adoption rate every week someone would see that pet it would you know they would Aww. find a home i hate calling a pet it they would find a home and I just got tired of seeing that shelters will really kill animals for space. Like, it's happening. When they say no kill, sorry, that's not a reality. They're being killed for space. Aww. And the mm -hmm. only solution is spay and neuter. We have too many freaking pets. Like, people don't understand spay and neuter. Men will say that they're going to keep their dogs intact. They want their balls because it's manly and it's mean. No, it's not. It's better for their health. And, oh, well, my dog's not going to get out. All it takes is your dog getting out one time to go impregnate three other dogs. And now we have... Have 30 more dogs in the world who half of them could end up in a shelter dead because nobody wants them and then people get mad at me talking about why do you need to buy a dog from a breeder because I want this kind of dog well you don't get to pick your children you know you just get pregnant and they come out and you love them anyway no matter what color eyes or hair or anything so go find a mutt and love the mutt the Correct. children pick yeah. us exactly <laughs> <laughs> but I just got tired of seeing that and the only real way to stop it is spay and neuter but it's not sexy nobody wants to talk about that so mm. I had an ex-boyfriend design my cute logo and I just decided fix in you know like you fix your pets mm -hmm. and just to try and like spread education and awareness and so that's what we started doing mainly low income people here in Southern California and then during the pandemic people started reaching out saying hey I can't I don't have a I job I got nothing else to do no they say I don't have a job I don't I, I can't, can't buy food it. for my family oh. much less my pets so then we started buying uh. pet food and then they were like I my dog's got a you know bleeding or a scratch or he's got mm. allergies now we're paying vet bills oh. so all of this is happening during the pandemic because we don't want them to surrender their dogs to shelters. No. We want them to keep them in their home. Just because you're poor doesn't mean you can't love a pet. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what we're still doing. And I would actually give away Aww. my kid before I gave a pet. And I don't have kids, but I mean, you know. That's, that's why. why. We should donate. <laughs> that's why she gave us away. <laughs> no. We should donate to shelters. We really well, should. No, you no, should food. donate and to money for pet food. You should you should donate to r local rescues because they're the ones who take okay. the pets from the shelters. And when people, oh. nothing to knock like national ASPCA and these organizations, but they pay a majority of their f money they raise to salaries and overhead. And these local rescues are like getting down and dirty and mm -hmm. using their own money and taking the dogs from the shelter on the last day before they euthanize them. And those are the people you want to donate to. Interesting, okay. but it's true. Work. But no. think about it. I mean, there is um not to switch, but the, you know, the, a lot of these nonprofits, like the Susan G. Komen Foundation, mm -hmm. um, you know, they did that lovely video. There was a documentary that actually exposed them, yeah. where everyone is like, you know, giving money and and walking and and donating. And the reality is, the CEO or CFO or those high. Be their salary is like four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand a year, and then the whole chain. And it came out to some incredible, shitty amount of money that, that was actually to going to research. Research. Yeah. So. So just all I'm saying is don't not donate to something you're passionate about, but just do your research and know how yeah. much of that money is being spent on what you want it to be spent on, because you're going to be surprised. Did so if people look up Fix and Fido, they'll find what? And could they donate through there? Yeah, of course. And that's what KN knows. I've been going crazy. I decided to, you've been to the golf tournament fundraisers, right? So I decided, because I'm insane, to, to do one. <laughs> and it's like planning a wedding. That's all I do with my time is plan this golf tournament. But, I mean, we got someone to give us a car to give away if you make a hole-in-one, $10,000. We have amazing stuff, and it's it's going to be amazing. But that's how I'm hoping to, instead of doing all these little fundraisers all year long, if I can just do a couple of these big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, because people all emailing me all day, and some of them I have to say no to because we don't have the money. Mm -hmm. But you know, So you don't have corporate sponsors or anything like that? I do for the golf tournament, but okay. I can't use that money to help people because right. I have to pay the golf course, golf course. for the golfers. And then, you know, we're, we'll make money off of it, but, yeah, it's sad. I can tell you I have an inbox of, like, at least 50 emails of people who either need food, help with a vet bill, or spay and neuter. And now, do you have celebrities me. attached wow. to it, like celebrity spokespeople or 
No, you just, should. It's you, just me. Why don't we call Connie Aww. Britton? Um, <laughs> but no, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of it, um, like there was this other golf tournament that was Half Moon Bay, mm-hmm. and they raised money for I don't remember, but they were just doing it like you were having normal people do it, and then you know, uh, um, doing auctions or you win this and you win that, and they ended up turning it like one of them because they do a few of them into like a celebrity mm-hmm. one, and the mm-hmm. celebrities donate their time. Yeah, and. They made like hand over fist. Over oh, you can that make a, you can make a million dollars doing one with a celebrity, but we're we're just a little nonprofit right now, so we we have to grow. We will. We'll you will. There. Of course. And you then will. someone will plan it for me, and Annabelle and I can just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Roxy? She's sleeping. <laughs> yeah. So I could totally help you um, grow your nonprofit. Really? Yeah. I've had a nonprofit. I'm actually go- starting another nonprofit. And we're looking, so I, st- I'm st- I started a solar company, and we're actually looking for nonprofits to give back to. So oh, there you w- go. We want to give back, like, f- uh, uh, for every solar panel, like, purchased, we want to give money to, like, a nonprofit. Ooh, so we, we can that. have one of your nonprofits as an option. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Can I make that. a request? Mm-hmm. Can you guys also help cats? Because we do. There's a million cats out there that are getting killed. I do. I do ca- dogs and cats. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a just t-shirt. a dog, but... It just was cuter, you know, dog, yeah, Fido, dog. Because I'm a total cat person. And, I know. And, and my cat, two cats are rescues. Mad. They're they're not, you know, like the best tabbies or whatever, but they are so adorable, so cute, and they would they would be dead now. Yeah, I'm, you rescue. I'm, I'm one cat down at the moment. Too much. Do you need another one? Uh, well, I don't really need another one. But you'd like. But one. there's a possibility. <laughs> there's an opening. Look, uh, last month, uh, last like a year ago, I had one, two, three. I had five. Then it went down to four. Now I'm down to three. Mm. And I have one that's really ill. And within a year, I may go down to two cats. And I'm good with that right now. It's mm-hmm. just, it's, um, yeah, it's it's hard. I think losing a pet is actually worse than losing a person. It's Aww. heartbreaking. Very, very emotional. Yeah, because very they love you no matter what. It's, it's unconditional Oh, my love. God. When yes. I get home and these two, when there's two little butts, like, wagging, and I'm like, two hands, two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time. You do? Relax, I have two hands for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> She's not talking. She's talking about a different kind of yeah, pussy. She is. Um, Cheryl, I'm mm-hmm. talking about a dog. Are <laughs> you an animal person? Do you have pets? I love animals. Yes, we actually gan kind of like you. My mom took in a bunch of cats to spade and neuter, and then we had them adopted out. So that's what we oh, were working that. with the last couple of years. And we ended up keeping a couple of cats for ourselves. But yeah, at one time, uh, my mother was really into this. Like just a, just a couple of summers ago, that's what we were doing all summer long. So we really Aww. appreciate all that you're doing, Casey. And everybody needs to, you know, get their animals spaded and neutered. It's so helpful just for your community. Yeah. What was, oh wait, there was... What was the guy? He did Prices Right. Bob, Bob Barker. Barker. Yeah, he Barker. was help control the pet population. Yep. Have yes. your pets spayed and neutered. He was the one. I, I mean, think. honestly, it, he was him, a hundred percent. Uh huh. But nobody listened. Nobody listened because that you're right. You stop it at, you stop it. You nip it in the bud because otherwise, then you would have you have so many. Oh, I'm gonna while you're talking, I'm gonna find a stat for you. It's actually disgusting how many animals. A stat. A stat. A stat. A stat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Bob Barker, somebody gave him a brand new car, but because the car had leather seats, he gave the car back. And oh, so wow. I'm not going to support this. Well, and mm, I've tried him. so hard. So I'm wearing Uggs right now, which are not, um, you know, vegan. I've tried so hard to not buy leather products. And, you know, I carry a backpack, a canvas backpack, and it's it's very hard. They haven't gotten the, the vegan shoe thing down yet no. because they're un- not comfortable yet. But I'm very aware, like designer bags. I used to be like a Louis Vuitton whore and not... I just won't do it anymore. I just feel guilty. Yeah. I still have to find this for you. It's All right. Really well, amazing. we'll talk amongst ourselves. So, so I'll, well, I'll, <laughs> show you, I'll show you a picture of my little babies. These are my two little daughters. Aww. And I have a Bijan Poo and a Multi Poo. <gasps> oh, and Oh, I met them. Yeah. I met the baby. So, so when she said poo-poos. two hands, she meant dogs. I did yes, mean I dogs. Know, I know. I know. So <laughs> um, they're both rescues. I was that person before that... I had to pick out the parents yeah. to pick out what the dog was going to look like. I had to pay the most expensive. I got the mini Labradoodles, one of the first ones to get it. Mm. And and then the 08 crisis came. And all these dogs fled to the shelters and everyone was dying. They were killing the dogs. And I'm like, this is horrible. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to buy a dog from a breeder again. 
And so they're both rescue dogs I from shelters. That. But you have to kind of realize it. You have to have a wake up moment or hear us talking on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Someone mm-hmm. has to kind of educate you because it's not something that we're taught. Okay, here I found it. Okay. So spaying and neutering makes a big difference. One unaltered female dog and her offspring can produce 67,000 puppies in six years. <gasps> 67,000? Yes. Wait, Just what? one cat. That's one dog. That's one. a dog. And her offspring. In seven years, one female cat and her offspring, 370,000 kittens. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. This is why I'm wearing this t-shirt and telling people to yep. cut their dog's balls off. I'm I not, like, there's, <laughs> it's, honestly, it's because this is real. And there, it's estimated that there are a million feral cats in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. I've had seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I bring them all, actually, I don't, my, my roommate used to work in an industrial area in Sun Valley, and. Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah, and, and she would bring them home. To, well, you know, um, you know, bring them to the house, and I'd go, mm-hmm. and I'd go, and and then I'd say, okay, well, you know, lock them in the bathroom until we get them checked out, because I had other cats, you know, didn't want them to have feline leukemia mm-hmm. or anything, and then brought them to the vet. By that time, I was already invested. Yeah, I'm like, because oh. I'm I've already become attached. I I become attached. I'm surprised she could catch them <laughs> being feral. Yeah. she had those. She worked with she um the traps. traps. The traps. There was yeah. a, a there's another um, nonprofit. It's like a mom and pa run thing, and oh, they're most d- of them are. And they would go to these places with cats that are overrun, and catch. They would catch them, trap and, and release, sna- snip an ear, yeah. Yeah. neuter mm-hmm. them, yeah. spay them, and then release them. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's the only way to solve it. I know it's not a sexy thing to talk about, but honestly, when you, we love animals, yeah. and they they die because. Someone's like, oh, I want my children. This is the worst. Yep. I want my children to watch my dog give birth. Why? Why? I, I don't Wh- know. I've <laughs> never heard that. I'll, I'll get I her fixed after that. after we watch her have a litter of puppies. Why? Right? I, oh, wow. I haven't heard that one yet. I never heard I that have. one. I mean, yeah. I believe you 100%, but that is bizarre. Makes me want to but then them. I hate people. On a, uh, <laughs> I mean, I will basically have a blanket thing and say hate, although I did look up, I actually did look up the word hate. Do you know that hate and love are interchangeable and that hate oh. actually is the like tenth degree of love? Yes. It means that you have oh. you're a more if you hate someone, there's more passion Ooh. within the oh. hate yes. than if you say you love someone. So we should be saying, I, I hate, hate you. you. Exactly. <laughs> I, hate I hate you. Wait, I hate you, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had to look you. that up. But what I really despise or dislike immensely it or is they're people because oh that <laughs> awful they're awful they are especially when it comes to our fur babies or their supposed fur babies you know people that they get the dog or the cat and then they've had the cat or dog for years years and then they're going to move and leave yeah. them and leave them or dump oh i them. can't what? believe that happens i cannot all I, too I, can't I, understand I, like what the fuck is wrong with you people I how mean. about or, oh, or i stab you but they get a dog or and what? they get a dog like a, um, like a pit bull and realize they have to train the pit mm-hmm. bull. I don't blame the dog. I blame the, the owner. owner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pit, bull, pit bulls. Any of the pit bulls. Pit I don't bulls. like them, but I wouldn't mistreat one. And I love right. any dog because I've met some beautiful yeah. pit bulls. My friend Jackie has two pit bull mixes, and they are the kindest, so sweetest, sweet. gentlest. Yeah, it is are. not about the dog. My, okay? This dog no. is meaner than a any pit bull. Any dog, <laughs> like any person... Any anything that breathes is going to have good days and bad days, mm-hmm. and you know it's really about the owners, and mm-hmm. the owners need to train their animals. So if you have an yep. owner that neglects a dog, or neg- not so much a cat, but neglects a dog, or how about trains their dog to be ferocious yeah, and I don't bite? Like that. Right. that you which know, they do. which mm-hmm. they do because they're making money on them for those stupid fucking. Yeah, fights so. that these right. fucktards oh. do. Um, I really. Do you, how do you really feel? I, I thought, but mm-hmm. see, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's like I'm so tired of like pit bulls and like I said, the bigger like Dobermans, German Dobermans, Dobermans, yeah. German like German you know they yeah. the, um, the ones the other one Rottweilers are supposed Weiler. to have a bad temper, but it's the people it's that the people train that them train or them. don't train them. Yes. I can't talk about training because I I don't train my dogs. <laughs> Clearly, mm-hmm. your dog bites people. <laughs> okay. Casey doesn't hey, Gayanne, even. Gayanne, I have a question for you. Why were you looking up the word hate and love? Yeah. And when? Oh. What state of mind were you in? 
Was it's, there wine that, involved? No, no wine. <laughs> it was a, it's a long story. But um, I don't go, I want to go into it. But, uh, <laughs> but I had to look that up because I had heard that at one point. Mm. And I thought, I think I'm right. I mean, not, I'm not always right, but something in my 57-year-old menopausal brain, you know, went, mm, I think you're right. And then I looked it up, and I'm like, I'm correct. So in actuality, the term hate, the connotation that we have taken it on in this is completely not really what it's meant to be. It is passion. It is more passionate than love. Mm. Amor y odio. Yeah. Oh. Amor y odio. So I'll probably exactly. never oh. say that word. I actually don't use that word that much anyway. Because we're programmed that, well, at least I am, you don't say that. I mean, I say it here because yeah. there are certain things that I don't, I mean, there are some things that are just so completely, like pedophiles. I hate them. Ooh, okay. Yeah. There are certain yeah. things that. Murderers. Murderers. We hate them. We hate them. You know, we hate <laughs> you people. But, you know, but then, you know, y you can look at a murderer. Okay, now you know why Roxanne and I watch the movies. <laughs> oh because if we don't watch them, we'd be the sociopaths committing the crimes. Okay? Um, but, like, you know, you really, I mean, I, I went to law school, and, 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 you know, I really wanted to practice criminal law, and then and that just, it just was so corrupt. The legal, legal, legal law is just extremely corrupt. But it, not with everything, but most things. But, uh, you know, you really have to listen to what the story is. Like, For you know. a murderer, you mean? Yeah. Like a woman. Mm -hmm who's been battered or beaten and finally turns around and just oh she's fine but that's what i mean so you <laughs> can't hate her so we can't say all oh, murderers you know what i mean but she is if she if she like if he like ran into the knife you know that would be <laughs> ran into the knife <laughs> that would be that if he ran into the knife uh -huh. let me run that i'm gonna use that yeah if if he, ever he ran into the knife. you ran into the knife damn it you're not supposed to be injured that is come here let me stab you that's okay in, that would be in that would be manslaughter that would be considered manslaughter if he ran into that but if you but the difference between uh manslaughter and any voluntary involuntary Detention. manslaughter or murder is um pre meditated premeditated yeah. And intention, yeah. it's premeditated. It's a good thing it's not illegal to think about murder. Huh? Right. Well, I I, I, oh, my God, I'd be in jail with all the thought <laughs> bubbles that I have as I'm driving, especially driving the streets in L.A. <laughs> well, I'll go a little further on that because yes. I actually have two um, pen pals who are in prison and they're both murderers. Ooh. And yeah. And um, I really don't particularly actually kind of know what they did. They're never getting out. They've been there forever. How did you become pen pals? Um, it's through a, uh, it's, it was called it's called Human Rights. It starts in it's uh, started in England, uh, and um, it's an idea of writing to people on death row. Oh. The other one was a friend of my ex husband's. So the other one hmm. I actually met through. You know, actually, vis I've actually visited him in prison twice. But uh, I'm, all I'm saying is that what they did so many 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 last century years ago was when they were very young, when they were got involved in something I actually don't even know because it doesn't really matter now they've been in prison 34 years oh, wow. 42 years both of them one each and I will say I did I do have a I well I did he, he's passed away now I had a family member that did commit murder he committed murder as soon as he got out of the military mm. and oh. um, I guess he got in a fight I, I think it was at a bar and then PTSD. He, he was so, strong. He so, was so, so, so you always know circumstances not everything is premeditated right yeah. Um, but I do feel murder should be, should be legal for one thing. <laughs> if your spouse cheats on you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, no. so <laughs> then, Watch out, the power then of then it should crowd. be up in the air. Are, have, you been, have you been cheated on? Um, oh, God, yes. Um, I don't know. Okay. It's not like a hard yes. I'm not, it's like an assumptive yes. Right. No proof. You don't walk in on hard. it. Have right. you been cheated on? Oh, God, on? no. I think so. I mean, who yeah. hasn't, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to know about it. Okay. I do. Not my marriage, but it, like in high school. Right. Yeah. Yes. I think we in all did. But not in college. Not Cheryl. I, I Cheryl doesn't. Cheryl. Cheryl's never cheated? 
No, no, Tony. Tony, I think we have a call. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl's like, you don't see me. Hey, everybody. There's thank you, call. thank There's you, call. Cheryl, for the segue. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You're watching Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. The first and third Friday of every month, we have our guests from KTLA and Fix and Fido's Casey Montoya. Please call in. I know we're riveting, but we want to hear what you have to say. Three two three five two four two five nine nine. That's three two three five two four two five nine nine. Please call in. It would be great to get one fucking caller tonight. <laughs> Wait, I, I just want to know if you think, you know, murder should be murder legal. should be legal. <laughs> if your partner cheats on you, I want to know. <laughs> uh, you know what? I just heard the phone ringing. <laughs> okay, so we have I, a caller. I do have I do have something to offer. My parents are from Ecuador originally. Many moons ago, when I was a reporter in Fresno, we covered Lorena Bobbitt. Mm. She's from Ecuador, and my dad's like nobody knows anybody from Ecuador or who we are. And the one time it's happened, <laughs> <really true. laughs> yeah, I feel it's it her. was valid. It was very valid. He cheated, and she took it. No, it wasn't valid. Oh no, he mistreated her big. Time. Oh, I thought he but cheated like too. But see, but, but, see, but the thing, I thought he cheated on her too. Yeah, he cheated on her. True. That's why she okay. chopped it. Well, what's the Italian yeah. Botafusco? No, 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 too. no, no, no. That's not why she chopped it. Because he was forcing himself on her oh, all okay. the time. Oh, oh. This guy well, he addict. deserved he raping his own wife. He deserved it then. But he needed to get that. Yeah. And let me just tell you really people because I think a lot of women like don't really know the definition of rape okay I'm just going to tell you this is the truth she looked this up after hate no I, <laughs> I learned it up I learned it in law school um is no. the definition of hate of hate I already gave that <laughs> definition of rape is let's just say you are on a date and you're kind of feeling it and he kisses you and it starts to get a little touchy feely, and then suddenly you say no. You mm -hmm. say no, and they continue to do it. That's a rape. It doesn't matter how what you got to first base, second birth, it doesn't matter what base you hit. The minute the woman says no, and the guy continues, or even women, because women rape other women, men rape other men, so it's not just a heterosexual thing. The minute the woman says no, it needs to stop. If it doesn't stop, and they continue to force themselves on you, it's considered a rape. Even if you're married. Even, right. Yeah. And the problem that I have with the system is they set it up so a woman can say that, but yet when you're in court, the woman has to prove. Yep. The burden of proof is on the woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's hard. And that's hard. And that's why so many women who are raped, the whole Me Too generate, the whole Me Too thing, why they never came out, was because part of the thing is they had to prove their innocence as opposed to it being so blatant that the law states no. So, you know, ladies, you know, God, I mean, if, this, if you're ever in a position and it happens and you say stop and God forbid it continues, you have every right to go out there and get an attorney and fight for yourself. Unfortunately, that includes getting everything you've ever done in your life raped up yeah. and thrown that out. That is true. In but that's another space. reason why they but don't it come should, But you know what? Mm. It's, look, I'm going to say it for probably the, I've been on the show since 2009. Everybody knows this. I have been raped. Mm. I did not say anything. I didn't. Mm. Um, but, you know, because you justify, go, well, you know, it wasn't a bad rape. It wasn't knife point. I mean, it's just they just did it. I mean, I, and I walked away, and, like, the worst thing I was wanted to make sure is, A, that I wasn't pregnant, and, B, that I didn't have fucking STD or AIDS or some shit. And once I got clean, you know, once I got a clean bill of health and all of them, I was okay. But a lot of women psychologically, and I just happen to be a strong woman, I never thought at any point mm. that it was my fault. And a mm -hmm. lot of women are they just they, they because the way it's set up is it must have been my fault if they tell someone well why were you wearing that dress right. why were you wear why were you showing your tits why were you doing this why did you even kiss them it was your fault you led him on and that's the problem i think with the world right now forget about rape and the legal system frankly it's the legal system is that everything is still very male oriented mm -hmm. the women from the pay that we still don't get the same, because I'm sure in your position, um, the guys probably make more than you do. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, in my position, I know that as a fact. So, you know, it really is about women, to some degree, banding together. We're mm -hmm. gonna get there. 
I may be dead by the time it gets there. But then yeah. again, you know, in my lifetime, you know, I've seen gay marriage, you know. So right. I think it's a fight that as women and empowering each other, we still have to continue. I'm just the saying. other thing is we are responsible for the next generation. Yeah. I mean, I'm, so, I'm 56. I remember in college. If we, and my college friends talked about it a couple of years ago when the whole Me Too movement started, and there was some movie came out um, about a fraternity gang banging a woman. Yeah. It was like two years ago or a year ago, and all of us were like on Facebook going, "Uh huh," because back then we attended fraternity parties, we were in a sorority, Happened and if we were drunk, time. and the next day we woke up, we're like, "Oh crap!" Okay, a lot of girls were date raped and didn't know it. Because they drank a lot. Mm -hmm. You think that they could say something or speak up? Oh, hell no. no. This is why we have to teach the next generation now. It's like, don't get so drunk out of your mind that you're going to black out and learn to say no and watch out for each yeah, other. Yeah, we should be teaching the mm. women. But I've, 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 some of my friends who have teenage sons or you know, thir 12, 13 are going to be teenagers. I've been very pleasantly surprised to know that they are making them aware of this and teaching yes. them at a young mm -hmm. age. No means no. And right. I'm like, wow, are you sure they're not too young to hear that? And they're like, nope. no, we're going to teach them. So you're exactly right. That's the only way to solve that problem. We, Yeah, we got to teach them young. Because guys back then... Now, at our age, they probably realize we thought it was just fun. We thought that they were into it because they were drunk and it was just partying. But now I think men our age realize, now I have a daughter and now I get it. Well, I think awareness. I mean, I think, like I've always said, you know, people, you can, do, you can make mistakes just in general. Everybody makes mistakes. You can continue to make mistakes. But at some point, you have to be aware of what you're doing is a mistake. And if you continue to do it, then you're a dick. But if you if you are aware, then you need to sort of make those changes within yourself, not yeah. to repeat patterns are caught patterns, you know, familial patterns, you know, you know, a, you know, a, you have a father that's a drunk. There's a good chance one of the kids is going to be a drunk or whether it's the guy or the girl, or the guy, the girl, could be the girl who goes to the frat parties and gets wasted all the time because she has yeah. low self-confidence. So, yeah. You are exactly right. We have to teach these young women. Young women and young men, because I mean, like, think about it. Back in the day, men our age, they were the ones slipping the roofies or whatever the hell they were doing. I mean, I'm not going with that never happened to me. But, you know, how many women got together and said, hey, you know, that guy's hot. Let's slip him a roofie and get him drunk and put him in bed. And let's just <laughs> fuck the shit out of him. What? No, that would never, I mean. That would never happen. Never happen. I was like, <laughs> not even equal rights there. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent point. That's what I'm saying. I mean, oh, I let's but, never say never. Right? But you know about women. I mean, I'm sure somewhere in Idaho that, or Iowa this has happened. But um, <laughs> no, 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 Gan, Arizona. 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 Oh my gosh, you don't know what's happening over there. <laughs> Just kidding. So I mean, the transition. I mean, you know, like you, most of you were younger. That actually, I think I could be. No, no, no car right on myself. Fifty-six. Yep, I think we're in that same age group. Some of you, you're yeah. young, and I'm you're young. Older, Sam, you're young. Yeah. And Cheryl, I don't even, you're ageless. I, I, so I have no you know, idea how I you are. I think you and I, Gay Ann, are the same, are the same age. age. So, I mean, what was my fucking point? Uh, <laughs> you, said, <laughs> you said transition is the last thing you said. I know. In Arizona. I know. Arizona. We're talking about orgies, oh, Arizona. So people our age, now I know. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. I told you this is just a real, this is not a real, like, this is structured thing. Called brain fog. <laughs> so, um, thank you so fucking much um, for that. Um, but... Speaking of people our age, because I was talking to a friend of mine um, the other day, maybe one or two. We've had this discussion, and it's sort of the golden, the golden girl syndrome. Because a lot of my friends, straight and gay, either are, are married or divorced and are never going to get married again, don't have kids, or are gay um, and don't have kids. Just And it's like, you know, we're talking about, I guess it was because of my mom, because my mom had just come out of the hospital, and, and you know, I'm her only caretaker, caregiver. And, you know, I have hired people, but, you know, it's strictly my yeah. responsibility. I'm an only child. And I was thinking, I'm like, and someone said to me, God, you know what, you know, when we're that age, if we live that long, <laughs> if we're that age, you know, we, you know, we don't have kids. We don't, what's going to happen to us? Like, right. who's going to take care of us? And then, you know, and it's not a, an idea. It's been on the Internet for years. It's like creating a community, golden girls like. Mm -hmm of you know, women or men, men and women. It could be even straight or gay men. It doesn't matter. But building your own community. That's not a 55 or 65 and over ones like Leisure World. Um, <laughs> but Because I would rather be dead than do that if that was my only option. And I thought, you know what? You know, it is, it's always building a sense of community. And I think, you know, 
when we go through life, you know, you have your life, you have your life, and we and we intersect and we intertwine, and everyone's just doing their own thing. That I think in this 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 year, this 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 time, that there really is a loss of a sense of community, of taking care of each other, not necessarily wiping your ass, but even to giving a fuck about someone's well being. Mm -hmm. People no, don't seem to anymore. care. It's just not really in our culture. It's not the norm. And it's like, I don't Which understand so sad why. It, this, I feel like it's, it's younger, mainly who they, I say the word all the time, the entitled. And I don't know when that started or why why it's happening. But Is that an earthquake? No. Yep, it's the air conditioner. There's an earthquake right now. <laughs> no, air right right now. Now. everything's moving. Really? I don't feel anything. Yep. Not I do. Not again. I don't. Oh, really? no, no, no. Eyes. No, it's everything not a big one. Northridge. No, look at my water. Everything's oh, maybe there moving. was an earthquake. Hold oh. on, I'll check my. We have, oh yeah, hold email. on. Someone. Okay, earth, oh, like don't worry. We're together. Wait. Hold the oh my God. Okay, so everyone knows about two <laughs> years ago there Hang was a on, really huge. Just moved. It was a really <laughs> huge earthquake, earthquake and Kara still moving. And look, I don't feel anything. And Kara never water. was in an earthquake, and she was under the fucking table, <laughs> yeah. and. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And well, I point, said, oh. I thought it was just the air conditioner. Came no, on. it started in Carson. Moving. Oh, really? Carson. Six in Carson. You were right. A what? It was an earthquake. 4.6 yep. in Carson. 4.6? Did you I, feel it? I felt it. You felt it? I, I didn't feel it. I, yes, I, I'm on the third floor of a townhouse and I'm shaking. I just yeah, think. Yeah, we're on the second floor. I just think my ass is so padded. There's a, just an, I don't feel anything. <laughs> no, I felt the wave. <laughs> I felt like the I thought the I thought I just wave. took too much medication earlier. Yeah. Hey, lucky you. I felt the wave and then I heard like a shaking around. Rattle outside of this. I hear nothing. No, but I heard all that, and then I saw this move and my water move. I I'm did. like, where? I don't know. I mean, it did. It all. It oh, did. We're move. together again. I didn't feel shit. I was too busy oh. talking. And there was one last Tuesday and one. Oh, last there's a call. Tuesday. Oh my God, we have a caller. <gasps> an an is it about murder or an earthquake? Uh, no. Uh, oh, they oh. dropped. Whoever <laughs> called. Probably my mom. Okay, Cherie, <laughs> pick up the phone. Three two three five two four two five nine nine. It said that the call dropped, so call back in. Three two three five two four. Two five nine nine. I do know who's calling. You do. Um, but Gayan, I totally agree with you. My sister's older than me. I'm the baby. She didn't have kids. My brother didn't have kids. I didn't have kids. And my husband doesn't have kids. And my husband's telling me 4.7 in Carson. Ooh, that's um, kind of a big one. So wow. we're all thinking of getting houses or homes near each other. That's and then smart. I was telling a friend of mine that she's like, none of her adult siblings have kids, so they're buying homes in a cul-de-sac to watch out for each other Lovely. as they get older. It's like Lovely. Nod's Landing all over I like again. That. <laughs> I like that, though. So I will tell you, being single and having no kids, I do wonder who's going to take care of me when I get older because I will have, everyone will, will be dead by then. Hold on, and I will <laughs> explain something to you because as an only child, for since I was eight, I was been thinking about this, obsessed. Mm. I'm telling you, you don't know my mind. I'm now you're getting to hear who I am. <laughs> um, I thought, like, who's going to fucking take care of me? And then I realized, not that long ago, is that I don't need anybody to take care of me. I have to take care of myself. It's no one's responsibility but my own. Mm -hmm. um, if I had kids, it wouldn't be their responsibility to take care of me. But that's our culture. It's like the parents. Well, I'm taking care of my mother. Okay, so I, yeah, I'm not saying, but I wouldn't expect that. Well, first of all, the entitled generation. But I wouldn't expect it. But I'm thinking, you know, it's up to me to be financially stable enough yeah. to mm -hmm. figure it out. So, you know, and then to be able to, when I am at that point in my life where maybe I need my ass wiped, maybe I need help walking around my house on my walker, that I am financially fiscal and stable yep. enough to take care, to have the people there to take mm -hmm. care of well, me. What about emotionally, Gan? Well, you know oh, what? Oh, I didn't think about that, but uh -huh. I, that's what I, I thought about. Emotionally, solution. not to take care of me, I think it would be, emo I would like emotional support. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that's, you know, is, if it, I, is it sad that Netflix is my emotional support? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Not at all. But you have your two little babies right there. I know. But when they're off in their own beds and I'm just like, another episode, another episode. <laughs> I mean, I, for me, that's what, like for me. And, and it's like a lot of my friends just don't understand. Be, oh, we have a caller. But being only child is that my friends, my closest friends become my family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have, we have a caller. We have a caller. We have a caller. Did you feel the earthquake? No, stop. Okay. Shut up about the fucking earthquake. I didn't say anything. <laughs> you get yelled at. Oh, I didn't do oh. it. I would never say shut up to Casey. I automatically would say shut up to Casey. Oh my God, I didn't say anything. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello, caller. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? This is Roxanne. Oh! Ah. <laughs> Roxanne, Roxanne Petunia, how are you? Roxanne, did you feel the earthquake? <laughs> Or is murder illegal? No, he didn't. <laughs> they didn't feel it. See, I didn't no. feel it. Roxanne, I'm sitting here with like like all these people, and I didn't feel one freaking thing either. I, just... I Patricia just texted me and said, "Did we just have an earthquake?" And I said, "Well, apparently, but we didn't feel it." No. She doesn't. She Casey never felt Montoya. Apparently, hold yes. on. Question. Casey. Question. Yes, Roxanne. Question for Casey Montoya: Have you ever donated blood? Um. Yes, but years and years ago. Like 20 years ago. Honestly, I'll okay. tell you something that makes people mad when I say this. The last time I went to go donate blood was about five years ago, and they weighed you, and I weighed 108 pounds, and they would not let me donate yep. blood. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Really? And I was I like, I can't donate what? blood. Because you're too, too Cause small. Your you have to be I 110. weigh 100 pounds. Yep. Yeah. I could well, donate for two people. I could a, donate that, for two people. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very round the world way of getting a compliment. I, I no, but I'm saying I, I don't like <laughs> saying that story because of how it sounds. But I was like and I was mad because I had planned my whole day and I wanted the But, you know, and, but you realize, Casey, if you donated blood, you would find out your blood type. type. <laughs> so I and that's exactly. what, that's what Roxanne was getting at. I think that I've heard that if you go get an antibody test for covid that they will blood type you as well. Oh, but oh, I just yeah, heard. Just do one. they? Because I just had one. Yeah, but I heard that. Uh, is this true? Um, um, uh, that you can't. They won't do an antibody test. It has to be like thirty, sixty, or ninety days or some shit. What? You Bef can just go get a blood test. You can. Yeah. All right. To see if I like it. since I got a Pfizer vaccine, I sh I could go get my blood tested to see if I still have antibodies from that. Roxanne, you still there? Of course she is. Yes, I am. What else you want to ask? Casey. Yeah. Well, well, you know she's exploiting my god babies. <laughs> And you know, yeah. no, no, no. Hey, yeah, wait a minute, lady. Hold on. You just wait one second, miss. She is not <laughs> exploiting anyone because they're on my show. She's not pimping them out. This is a family based <laughs> show. Anne's exploiting them. I am their auntie, too. So there, there's no exploitation. If she was on like no, a Jerry I, Springer, I, I am, I, I am more than their auntie. I'm in she's line. She's like their mother. <laughs> she well, always says, if anything happens to me, she's I taking my dog. I am their. <laughs> their I am their nice stepmother. Well, I told, I invited you to come into the studio today, and then they would have thought it was a play date at Auntie Roxy's. <laughs> <laughs> I am worried that she will steal my dogs one day. Truth be told, <laughs> she might, she might move away to Vegas and take my dogs, and I'll, I'll go to, to pick them up, and they'll be gone. I'll come with you, and I'll bring the gun that I bought. <laughs> <laughs> Those dogs belong to me. See, she, you know when they, they you've heard of crazy dog lady? You're talking to her. <laughs> yeah, no, he, yeah, she pretty, she is the crazy dog lady. Um, <clears throat> yes, she is. I am. I guess. I, 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 Dan, what was it? We had one time. What, sixteen dogs? Sixteen here? dogs. No, seventeen. I remember. I counted because it was fifteen. And there, and then there was, of course, my little loves, your babies, Bradley Cooper. Oh. And <laughs> Penelope Cruz. And Penelope Cruz. Those who, are her dog's names. Who, I who I watch on occasion, and they actually were on the podcast as well. Because oh, nice. we were doing it from home. Oh. And I said, okay, well, they have to have their 15 minutes of fame because they're so beautiful, too. Yeah. They are. They're I really hope you cute. have a big backyard. She has a bit. Yes. Yeah. She has I a, do have a yard. <clears throat> yeah, but she I, does. I have a queen size bed, and, you know, I get like 11 dogs. And my girlfriend sleeping over. Her <laughs> girlfriend must love that. Sheree's <laughs> sure sure got a heart yeah. of gold. <laughs> is that a feather flying yeah, towards Gayanne? Yeah. And, and God knows we can't, you know, ruffle Annie's feathers because, you know, she doesn't like to be disturbed when she finds a happy place. Exactly. And um, <laughs> I spoil them rotten, as Casey would tell you. Annie, I have to have a menu for Annie. My oh yeah, no, we know. Literally, <clears throat> no, that's true because she can pick from eggs or chicken. Or yep, eggs. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But everybody likes mm. my dog food. Oh, yeah, it is. Did you guys know yeah. that she makes dog food? No, I didn't. Okay, need some. so do you? <laughs> yeah. What do you feed your dogs? Um, no, hold on. There's enough about her. Talk about me. No, <laughs> you talk too much. <laughs> it's, it's, excuse me. me. <laughs> it's my. <laughs> hold on. Can we set up something? It's. I've told you. It's, it's my show. We can talk about me any fucking time I want. <laughs> the, there's organic a place called Just Food. Yeah, it's just, organic dog. Just Food for Dogs yeah. does the like human 
quality. Like I could eat it. It's all human ingredients. Yeah. And so they'll teach you how to make it. And so Roxanne was making it for a while. And apparently she has a recipe for this dog food that they just like. Really? And she makes it. She goes over to Roxanne's house and makes like vats of dog food. And I'm doing that tomorrow. I'm making really? a vat of dog food tomorrow. Thanks for inviting me, but I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I buy Fresh Pet. Oh, okay. Hey, K- Casey, you see, you're yeah. no, and eight. How tall are you? Five four. Okay. Okay. I know. I hate two. telling. I hate telling that story because people are like, "Oh, big problem." But like, that's why the last time I went to give blood, they wouldn't let me, and I didn't think that they would really weigh you, and they really did. Yeah, yeah but you know what? Really but you did. are. I mean, you. you for me are proportioned because you're not big yeah. boned. You're very petite. So a hundred and five. I mean, it's one thing if. I was 105. I'd look like Scarecrow, you know, uh, and an ugly one too. Because I be don't even, is there a scale yeah, there's here? There's I'm a so certain curious amount of weight way. that you can't go under to donate yeah. blood. Yeah, it's 110. Yeah. 110. Yeah. I did not know that. Honey. I didn't either until five years ago. I wanted the orange juice and cookies so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I could give you some. Tell you your never mind. Type. I know. But, but you I can't was, even get the blood drawn I, for the blood type. <laughs> and I did. The last time I gave blood, though, before that, it was two years before that, I passed out. But And I was willing to do it again. I did go. Well, how come they took your blood then? Oh, because you weighed more. Oh, oh, yeah, I weighed more, yeah. I think no. I weighed 112. Woo! <laughs> well, maybe I was a real fatty. Did you a, feel a lightheaded afterwards? Oh, yeah. What, Rox? Yeah. What would you say, like Rox? The next time when you just have a doctor's appointment, just you know, when she gets blood drawn, they, they have won't. it typed. I have, of, you know, they don't do it. They, they just won't. don't want to do it. So, They're very hesitant. I know. You've already told me that. So I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I've been going to a rheumatologist my entire life. I've asked her twice if she would blood type me. No. 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 Well, you it's can weird. ask for it. You just have to pay. No, she won't even do it. Uh, you you can. need to find you, a different doctor. Okay, I'm a woman's wellness coach. That's <laughs> my <laughs> profession. And right. the one thing that pisses me off is we don't push our own self-help advocacy. We don't ask for cortisol tests, our blood type, and everything. You should demand yeah. it. You're the patient. I know. It's your body. Just I'm... say, okay, if my insurance won't pay for it and you won't write it up, I'll well, how? Well, you know what? How long is it our body? Here we go, Roe it's versus not, Wade, exactly. okay? Oh, how, how long is it going to be our body, on. ladies? It's not our body because we're, they're making you, you get vaccinated. You demand yeah. That's not right that she I know. Okay. Go ahead. I have to go. Open up the vaccination conversation. I can't. No, I, I, can't. I can't. Bye, Roxy. Nice to meet Bye, Rox. Bye, Bye, Rox. Um, I, I will demand it. I'm going to see her again next month. But I was just going to go back to my holistic doctor, who's the one who found out I need to be gluten-free. Um, she'll test me for anything I want. But Your ND, yeah. But no, that's the one thing I push so much is point. women do not ask enough questions and they just nod their head and accept yes. These are intelligent, well-educated women who do not ask enough questions and push it and get second and third and fourth opinions. Mm. Well, I, I totally agree, but they, they just it does. They it say does. no. I asked you. I asked my doctor two days ago. I would like a T cell test, please. Yeah. Because even if I if I had COVID a year ago, I wouldn't have any more antibodies. So that's not going to help me. Right. I want to know if I had it. And a T cell is what holds the memory of it, so I understand. But they were like, "Ooh, T cells!" You know, like there's I'm a speaking some like I'm some weird. There's scientist. a place called Healthy by Nature. This holistic doctor, Stacy Kupperman. She's you gave me that. Yeah, she's she'll probably test you for any of that. Thank it's not you. on insurance, but I don't mind. Well, but there's okay. another place I heard besides Stacy that also got a good write up or reviews. It's on Riverside Drive in Toluca mm-hmm. Lake. I forgot the name of it, but they do the same things. And I would suggest anyone, if you have extra, I think it was maybe, I don't know, no more than 800 bucks to get the blood work done. But I had, I've had mono in my life, which is the worst thing ever. And so I know what mm. fatigue is. And a few years ago, I had that fatigue and my hair started, stopped growing and started falling out. And I was like, there's something wrong with me. And no doctor knew what. I go get my blood work done. And she's like, yeah, you have to stop eating gluten. You're one gene away from being celiac. And there was all these other things. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, and they never yeah. knew. No. And no one would have known because this holistic doctor thinks outside of the box right. of the way right. that our doctors think. And so. And there are good Western medical doctors that yes. will listen to you. But you have to keep asking. Oh, Most you have to beg. Well, well, because the Western, do- because the Western doctors right. are governed or whatever controlled by big pharma and all this other shit even if they want to do it you know our insurances will kick it back because there's got to be a reason right. there's got to be this exactly. so if you that's so you, you know eastern medicine you know holistic doctors i will tell you what has solved like i've had migraines i've had a horrible like anything that's ever been wrong with me has been solved with 
acupuncture. Oh my God, I love what? acupuncture. I wish it worked for me. It doesn't. I'm no, I'm done. It, does. Yeah. it does. It does for me. There is a Margie who Margie Duran who you know is a was you know comes on here as a rotating co-host. You know she'll come to my house and I'll call. She'll say, "What do you want?" I said, "I want the works." Well, and what she'll do is massage, gua sha, cupping, I love and cupping. acupuncture. And, and a happy cupping. ending. And <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> and it's and like, love for love me, it. it's like, oh, my God. And and she laughs because I'm like, you know, I like, I mean, I'm wearing the cupping marks. Yeah. Is proudly. Like, uh, uh, proudly. I'm like. Remember when Gwyneth Paltrow, like, made that a thing yeah. on the red yeah. carpet you saw? But I, I mean, if you find someone who's good at that, like, that solves many problems. Mm. Oh, I can't God. believe it doesn't work for you. It's seriously, like. No, I've been to so, over the years, over the past 20 years, I've gone for so many things. I have degenerative disc disease, rheumatoid arthritis, like, no, orthoarthritis. It just doesn't work. Oh. So for some people it works, for some people it doesn't. Yeah. But at least I tried. Yeah. What I yeah. really like is UCLA is now starting to merge the Eastern medicine and Western medicine because there's such a demand for it. And so the more we demand it, the yes. more that they will merge and that Western medical doctors will start integrating that. Wait till you're over 60. That's when they really don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They truly I do see. not. Horrible. I mean, but I think the elderly and going through this whole thing she with my mom. She just called you elderly. <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. I'm talking about her mother. She is. I mean, I love Cara, but I'm just uh -oh. talking about. No, I said no. I said uh, my, yeah, that's true. Maybe I fucked up. That's but I mean, my mother is. My mother could be Cara's mother. That's how old she is. She's 89. <laughs> but you know, it really, as you get to a certain point when you get older, and and you know, and seeing my mother just go through what she went through, you know, as elderly people, older people. You know, we need an advocate when it comes yes. to the medical profession. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because I have, I mean, like just sitting in the hospital for a week when she was there, I'm like on top of it. I'm like asking the nurses, asking the doctor. I mean, I'm just on it. What are you taking? Nope. She, you know, and I'm looking going, nope, she doesn't take that medication. I told you to take it off the list. Do not give that to her. And, you know, so, you know, and that's mm. someone that's 89 that has her scruples but could give a fuck about medicine anymore because she doesn't remember what she's supposed yeah. to take because I'm giving it to her. But That's I think right. a lot of people over a certain age, whether they're of sound mind and body, you know, we need to be our own advocates in the medical profession. I think as we Absolutely. get older, even more. But as you're saying, Ronnie, even as young as you are, don't be afraid to question. If don't be afraid you feel to like question. Casey said, if Say no. Is as well. If you feel like, like something's wrong, yeah. something's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. It's true. But a lot of people won't go to the doctor. Yeah, they're afraid. I had a, there was a great rheumatologist in San Diego, part of Scripps Hospital, and he's he's just amazing. He did he drew 25 tubes of blood. Oh my gosh. He sent them across the country. I had to wait a month for the results. He's the only one that gave me the answers, and the main one was gluten intolerant. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And well, and then Epstein well, Barr was in there but too. But you know what? I've That's got a wow. mono. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have Hashimoto's, but the thing is, gluten, because like. It, it, because it's in food. It, I miss gluten. People don't. So do I. But that's what I'm saying. Things, things that are affecting our body. You know, be, it, it's like a lot of it's food. It's it is true. What you put in your mouth really is important to think what you go in what goes in your mouth should be pure now mm -hmm. okay look the girl who has the snack tray at the end of the night with cheetos and popcorn and ice oh, cream you kill me. me when you say that i do oh my god i do i do <laughs> but i don't you know i do i do I, I, I do it but i eat everything else that's you know i cook i love to cook i cook clean i like you know I, and i'm a pretty good cook i won't say i'm a chef but i'm a pretty good cook um how you come know, i haven't been invited down you want to come for the dog food? Okay. But, but, but yes. Dan, that powder on those Cheetos is like, that'll live forever. Yeah. I know, but I don't sit here and eat the whole bag. It's like a little okay. bit of this. But you just can't, don't buy it at the store and then it's not in the house. Right, That's which true. I do too. But That's the thing is, idea. I get it. Okay, thanks. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> no, but thank you. There is a way I lost it. 45 pounds on that diet, so keep quiet and I'm healthy. <laughs> okay? All right. Well, you can lose, you can lose weight eating 900 pounds I have a day kept it off for three years. She's so never going to decompose, but she lost 45 pounds. There you go. <laughs> you know what? I'll be, I'll be as alive as a Twinkie when you all are fucking withered. Okay? because <laughs> the process shift but the reality is it is really i mean it's 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 like body medicine it's it's whole food it really is it's
it's medicine. And what you put in, you know, how many people have high cholesterol? And the first thing that the Western doctors do want to put you on a fucking statin. medication Never. to stop it. So, statin. no, you know, they want to put you on statin. But yep. I know at least three people, three people who have controlled that with food. Oh, yeah. With Absolutely. food. Omega-3. Oh, Omega-3. So, you know, and that's right up your alley, Ronnie. I mean, that's what you do. But, you know, because it's not... You know, it's it's a clinical disease or it's a clinical whatever. You know, the Western doctors are going to want to give you a pill because big pharma and they get a cut and God knows what the fuck they are doing. Then some of them are testing. But the point is, if people, you know, that's what I'm saying. You have the right to say no. Like when I was anemic, um, when I was menopause, when I was the beginning of menopause, I was I have fibroids, so I was bleeding profusely and I was anemic and I would go in for the iron infusion. It's kind of like chemo, but with iron, because I just had no blood, you know? Wow. And um, and I was like, he was giving me iron pills. And the iron pills were screwing up my stomach. Oh, yeah. And constipation, yeah. FYI. I was gonna say, you okay? didn't poop. They do. Yeah. I didn't poop. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, fuck this shit. So I went mm -hmm. online and I found out what are the, uh, um, the iron rich foods and I was eating them. Some of them I didn't like, but I ate them on purpose. Oh, it's way but, better to get but it But then food. there was that thing called blackstrap molasses, which tastes yeah. like ass, okay? <laughs> I didn't know what ass tastes like. It's a little she, she does. She does. I don't. Well, I don't mind ass. Um, but it, it's a blackstrap molasses, and I was, like, literally holding my nose and just, like, because yeah. I mean, it just, it, I, it's like, why doesn't it taste like honey? You know what I mean? No. Just because it's called molasses, you thought it was going to be sweet. Yes! I thought it was, like, going to be yummy, and I, I, like, opened up grandma's old molasses, took a big old heaping teaspoon, shoved it in my mouth, and I thought I went to hell. It was like, mm. No, but oh, you are no, making a good point. For you, and you don't have to swallow it. You can actually just do packs, which I've discovered, castor oil packs. Mm. Great for oh, yeah. Cramps, stomach cramps, menstruation cramps, headaches, your liver. I didn't believe it at first. That's it what Edgar works. Casey. Uh, That's Edgar exactly Casey right. Recommended it. Yeah. Really? Yes, yeah, Edgar, Edgar Casey, the uh, sleeping prophet. Correct. When you Castor say packs, packs, when you put them yeah. on you, somebody or... turned me on yeah. to that. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna look into this. Oh wait, you they put work. them on you? Hold on. It's a, it's a. It's... <laughs> or you eat them? Like no, 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 no. I'm it's lost. Them on you. No, no. Castor oil packs. And the thing is, it's like I read that my friend who was who reads all of Edgar Casey and stuff, and she, and I had fibroids, and I don't want to have surgery. You've got a lot of shit going on. <laughs> and you know what? It's and you, she eats Cheetos. Cheetos. And Cheetos. you know what? Yeah. And <laughs> you Cheetos. never know it. Why? Because I'm not a fucking complainer. There's a lot of shit going on nobody knows. But I'm the healthiest one here. I, no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty healthy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm pretty healthy, too. I mean, I just didn't want to have surgery because they say yeah. that when you hit menopause, it shrinks. They shrink. And what, because there's no what shrinks? What fibroids, shrinks? fibroids. Oh, so what's a fibro? Where is that? In here. In your womb. Oh, it's I don't like, know. My it's womb's like, dried it's up. Like, it's like tumors. <laughs> no, my mind is dried up too. But I guess they're desiccating. I'm hoping. Oh. Um, but they said, <clears throat> excuse me, castor oil packs mm -hmm. for that, and I bought it and I tried it, and I don't know if it really helped. But oh, I, I'm not I saying it's supposed to make I your hair grow. That it works. You put um, it on your hair too. I do I have something to ask Casey and all of you. Cheryl, yes, Roxanne, everybody. Um, like I, you guys know. First of all, I'd like to ask Casey her age. She doesn't have to say, but I'm, I'm 56. Gayanne's 57. 43. Um, I was in news. I worked at KFI for a while, and and then I got out of it. The reason I came from TV to radio is because I didn't dare at the time in 2010 try to get my tape to a local station. Mm -hmm. I was I was intimidated by my age. Because unless you're in the network and already established, if you try to go to a local station like number two market Lo Los Angeles or number one New York, I thought even though I had a good agent at the time, like no one's going to hire me. Um, so what's the question? Now I regret it, but it was L.A. Mm -hmm. Do you see – and I was in, in radio for nine years and I got out of it because of my parents' death and all these things um, in 2016. But – do you see or do you ever think about, because you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, Casey. Oh, thank you. But do you ever start looking at ageism in local news? I mean, 
I I realize it's a reality. It's going to happen, and I always say it's a good thing I'm smart because at least I'll I can produce news when I don't look good anymore. But consulting in Hollywood, you yeah, should be. I feel like with the amount of Botox I inject in my face, I've got <laughs> I've got at least ten years to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Also, you're in the right place because. You, you're going to age along with people opening their minds. Right, I, right. I, I don't mm -hmm. think you will lose your job. I, I know I lost mine from age. Um, but, I mean, you look at people who have been at my station forever. Like, people work at, like, Mark Krisky has been on the air mm -hmm. on that show. He's a man. Man. Oh, that's true. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Sam Rubin, a man. Man. I mean, I don't know. How the many thing women is, like, do you see that really last in local news? Okay, maybe in L.A. because what about kind Colleen, of establishing a big market. What about Colleen Williams on NBC? I don't know her. Oh, Colleen oh, Williams. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you're right. Because this is a bigger market. But let's take Christine it to the Devine. Markets. Christine Devine. Oh, she's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some. There's I mean, there's more men. But here's the thing <clears throat> is I feel like women leave the business before they're told, you know, you're too old to be on TV. I know you can't say it like that. But I feel like they leave before they're up, you know, before they're. You know, expiration expires. date <laughs> because they don't want to ever have to have that conversation. And right. men's... what about Jillian Barbary and Dorothy Lucy? They were kicked off the the, the number one rated show on Fox. Was it because Local they were Fox. old? They I were think they were because they were in their forties. And then uh, what was it called? Good Day LA. Yeah. And then the well, that was just a terrible show anyway. It shouldn't they should have been they canceled started anyway. But the thing is, I <clears> used <throat> to watch that when I was in college, and they started talking over each other so much, and it was just like you. It became unwatchable. Yeah, I agree. And they like, kept Steve Edwards. Well, yeah. I was but just curious. I do. I think I've thought about that before. I don't think about it very much, but I do. You know, I'll I'll tell anyone anything I've ever done to my face. I do things to stay looking young, and I think any yeah. woman should. You should do whatever makes you feel good. Exactly. Um, but I I think most women actually do leave before they're told, or made to feel like shit because they're old and wrinkled. And I think it was that generation that we were afraid to. Well, well, we're different now, though. We're different Can now. You, yeah. I cannot even yeah. imagine someone trying to, in this day and age after Me Too, of trying to yeah. let a woman go because yeah. she's 55 yeah. or, you know, and not getting Botox and showing her age because that's a lawsuit and a whole nother movement that that will happen. Absolutely. I just I feel like 46. we're safe. I moved to L.A. for the stupidest reason. My ex-husband, he was still my husband back then, and he had me leave San Diego. Um and now he's my ex, so that was you like could a have gotten reason. a job here but, in a heartbeat. But my my, I, I went to radio. But my fear was I can't compete with these youngins. Yeah. And my and, and it's I, so stupid. I think oh wow, I've got way more experience than them. They're gonna hire me. It over doesn't them. matter. That is what I do know. I mean, I, look, I must say that I am an anomaly. I really am because I'm 57, going to be 58. I've been at my job since 1989. That's awesome. That's great. Wow. People <laughs> are retiring or being bite, bought out left and right, and I'm still standing. And it was funny because, you know, and the, one, saw a gentleman, one, he was a photographer, he's retiring, and I looked at what was left, what's left, who's left in my department, and I always, everywhere, when I worked at Rogers and Cowan, when I worked at the law firm, when I worked at the music business, when I worked at ABC, I was always the youngest, the youngest. Now I'm not, and I'm looking going, well, there's one person that's older, but I'm like the older one now, <laughs> you know? Like, You're the indentured <coughs> one. I am the indentured one, but again, I am fortunate because of the company I work for that they actually do value my experience. experience. Um, and that's what I've always loved about working at CBS is that they always valued like experience. They call us, they call me like people that, that have been at CBS for a long time, the legacy. We are the legacy. Yeah. And I do feel that they do respect us. You've got fabulous energy. Oh you never phone it in. No, I mean, I'm, I know I'm good at what I do, but you know, if I was just a number, I'd be out. So, you know, they're taking into consideration, yes, she's older, we could probably get maybe for, you know, maybe two for one, you know? Yeah, and they yeah. could. And they could, because everybody wants to work in the entertainment business, that one opportunity. Um, right. And so I'm really fortunate and blessed and in gratitude that, you know, and it's, it's I'm 57. It's I'm not even that old. I don't feel that old. And yeah. yet, you know, <clears throat> on the job market with many of my colleagues at other places, see ya. Yeah. So mm. I think, you know, 
I don't know if it's just women. I don't know if it's men. I think women in front of the camera, like yourself, like actors. I mean, you know, it's sad. Even like we know actresses, you know, there are uh, TV actors or, or movie actresses. You know, they have botched up mm -hmm. their face. Oh, gosh, yes. So oh much. God. Renee oh Zellweger. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who is she? Anyway? Renee. She's going to say that. She does oh. look good, but she, she doesn't no. look the same. No. no. Yeah. Now what's that other one? No. Meg, Meg Ryan? Oh, Courtney Cox. So I saw Courtney, Courtney Cox. Cox on Instagram like oh, the no. other day, I and I was like, oh, she's like the most beautiful woman. Oh, oh no. no. There's some women like that. It just makes that me is... sad because she was so beautiful. But that's yes. what I'm saying. But, you know, and that's unfortunate because obviously that goes inward with insecurity, low self esteem. That's got to be a root and, and a seed. But then you add the fact when you're being reminded that you're not getting jobs and you're not doing this. You know, that's a, that's a bigger mind fuck on someone who has that. Because just because you're not, you know, 25 anymore, you know, if you're a good actor or a good actress, you're good. And it shouldn't matter mm -hmm. how old you are. But I think the best person, I don't think it should matter how old you are, if you're male or female, black, white. I think everyone, the best person should get the job. <coughs> exactly. 25, 55. <clears throat> we just need to all stop judging each other. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. You would okay. have to remove <laughs> L.A. I know. I know. <laughs> no, no, it's not just actresses are in front of the camera. It's like, like you know, I, I coach women now. And I was turned into a coach because I was listening to women, badass women with experience like Gayanne in other professions and other fields were all of a sudden becoming afraid of not being indispensable or being indispensable. Being, being dispensable. 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 They stayed on that email and they were always on at their boss's beck and call, or if they were the boss, they had to stay on top of the game during COVID because businesses right. were mm -hmm. furloughing. There was less business mm -hmm. and they were older. And it's all of a sudden like the strongest women needed coaching because it's like, okay, I have to reinvent myself. I have to put, pull my big girl pants up and I'm midlife. I've got kids in college or kids in high school and I have my older parents to take care of. And oh my God, I'm in my forties. Oh my God, I'm in my fifties. Mm -hmm. It was a real anxiety. Mm. Absolutely. They're educated, they're experienced, <clears throat> but they were afraid that people that they couldn't reinvent themselves. Those young bitches <laughs> in the forties. <laughs> well, but the thing is, you know, <clears throat> if you're smart, not necessarily book smart, smart, savvy. You should have no problem reinventing yourself. I mean, I have, right. I've been at my company for a long time doing the same job and I love it and that's why I'm still there. But I also, outside of it, have reinvented myself. You know, a music manager, a DJ, record producer, record remixer, um, Dog food maker. Dog food maker. Yes. I mean, you know, because I there's a lot more to me. Mm -hmm. And I get on a whim and I'm like, oh, I like this. I'm going to try this. And I do it. And then once I've hit the pinnacle, because I just won't stop midway, I have to like get the accolades <laughs> and go, all right, I have hit the top. I'm done. And then I move on. But I think that's more of a personality thing because some people are just happy doing the same job every day, pushing that same paper. And that's fine. And that's fine. Well, I don't we need them. Yes, we need mm -hmm. those, those, you know, but, you know, there are people that are the foundation and then there are people that is the, that are the artwork on the wall. And it's also this generation, you're a hard worker, Gayan, and I think everybody here is. I, yeah. I heard this guy he's in his 20s who wants to work four hours a day that's his dream job he's move to sweden i think he's exactly. 20. move to europe, move to not, europe not here because you don't get it here but you know and again you know you look at europe and i'm not saying europe's perfect because you know there's a lot of shit going on in europe that we're probably not privy to because we think it's more glamorous because they present the media presents it as being so wonderful because they got a lot of other shit going on but you know it's you know europe is is different it doesn't mean it's better you know we have certain things here that are just phenomenal that they don't have like everybody thinks socialized medicine well talk to a european it ain't that great you know mm -hmm. it's not that great socialized. so everybody gets it but it swings and roundabouts sometimes it's great sometimes it's great you know but even so you know a lot of the people in the, that can afford it in a socialized medicine prefer to be private have privatized you know but in any event ladies casey 
Yeah. You were talking about working. I know we're wrapping up because it's eight thirty, ladies. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I told you the hour and a well, half goes well, by fast. We do fast. have a little news here. We have yes. a, we have a news. There's yes. a, a big refinery fire going on right now in Carson from the earthquake. Ooh, really? Oh, yeah. oh wow! It's, a, it's pretty big. Holy shit! That's from KCLA. Well, Casey, you know what the top KCLA. story for the morning is. Yeah, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to thank all of you out there um, for watching and supporting and. You know, calling in Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> My mom must have fallen asleep. She was supposed to call. <laughs> oh, you know, it, it's so funny. I told Rox. I said to Rox, "You, have, I said, I want you to come on the show. You'll have a good time. You're, you're a talker." And I, she is. She is a talker. So you should have come on tonight <laughs> with us. But you're always welcome because any seat at my table from my friends can join at any time. But I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen out there, and whatever else your new label is um how you identify with we love all um i don't seem to understand it so help me but in any event thank <laughs> you for watching us here on you know it's between the sheets first and third friday of every month here on united broadcasting network 7 p.m pacific instagram qte brat youtube between the sheets with gay and bruno facebook between the sheets between the sheets, hmm, whatever. And um, <laughs> so I just, I just did things between the sheets. So I really want to appreciate that without you and your support um, and you telling people and spreading the word because, you know, I don't have sponsors. I don't have yeah, anything. Yeah, let's get her some sponsors. She needs to monetize this she show. She does. <laughs> so she I makes just, her own dog food, for God's sake. <laughs> I, know. I know. So I want to thank you all for being supportive and sharing and being part of the street team to get the word out. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm going to go around the room and uh, we'll start with the ladies and I'll end with you because you're my special girl. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> Cheryl, what do we have going on with you? Thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, ladies, thank you guys so much for uh, for being together tonight. Everyone, you can reach me on my website, uh, mediumcheryl.com, along with Facebook, Instagram, Medium Cheryl. Uh, lots of events coming up for September, October, November. So just take a look. Thank you, Cheryl. I love Medium Cheryl. I think I'm actually making an order at Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> I love Medium Cheryl. Ronnie Louisa. Hi, I'm Ronnie Louisa. I'm a Fab After 50s women's wellness coach. Please look me up on Instagram, Ronnie Lowe, R-O-N-N-I-E-L-O-A. I would like to invite you to September 24th, Friday, Provider Fatigue. It's a two-hour live show with an MD, an ND, um, a cardio PA, physician's assistant, and a business consultant. We're going to talk about provider fatigue and burnout not just help for the health care provider, but for any professional who's experiencing burnout and not taking care of themselves. It's next Friday, 9 a.m., so it won't clash with anything at night. So just DM me on, on Instagram, Ronnie Lowe. I would love to give you an invitation, and you can pop on there, unmute your mic, and ask your questions. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Ronnie. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Roxanne Rosen, Tristan. Roxanne Rosen, <laughs> Tristan. You can find me <laughs> at Roxanne Rosen, and I have a solar company. That is helping a lot of people um, save money and save the planet. So if you're looking for solar panels on your home or business, or if you're looking for a job, please reach out to me. You know what this reminds me of Fernwood tonight? Um, Cara Noble. <laughs> you will find me in my backyard topping up my... <laughs> Topless sometimes because I've been in the south of France, and if you can t get your, t your kit off, I do it. I did it every day on the beach. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, because it's it's legal there. <laughs> so, so if I yeah. do it, I did it. Yeah, good. you go, girl. So come on over, baby. Yeah. Hey, hey, Cheryl. Just a reminder before I get to Casey and the babies. Um, Thomas John, he'll be yes. our guest. It's October first, right? Right. Okay, right. October first. Thomas John. Medium yeah. Thomas John. I think that's the next episode, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I'm like all for, for toots oh. with the calendar. Will he give his but readings? Toots. He's huh? going to be doing readings and taking calls. So if nice. you can't make it, call in. So I expect oh. everybody out there that's on my podcast to promote that episode because I don't want fucking crickets <laughs> when we've got Thomas John on. Tell your friends and all this stuff to call in because you will be graded. Um <laughs> I want a reading. <laughs> five callers per person. Five, I expect. Okay. Five. I'm going to be calling from here. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> She'll go in the bathroom and call. I'm like, I'll be back. Well, you've got seven aliases. You could. I uh, can. You yeah. can, yeah. <laughs> um, and I wanted to thank uh, my friend Casey Montoya. Thank you for joining us. Um, 
Rock, should we see the babies one more time? Come here, little boy. Oh, Oops. No. Okay, Roxy. Roxy. Roxy's <laughs> like, done no. with us. Man down. And Annie's <laughs> snoring. So, um, Just that's where? For me. KTLA. But where can people find you on all your social handles? Uh, my name, Casey Montoya, and you can go to my website, fixinfidos.com, if you want to come to my golf tournament, October seventeenth, or just make a donation. Find out what we do. We're looking for volunteers, uh, and you can find me every weekend on the KTLA Weekend Morning Show, doing the weather now. Yes, is, it, is it green screen? Yeah, green screen. Mm. Nice one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do they tell you how short to wear your clothes, your skirts? No, I don't wear s- stuff like that. I'm just I wear asking. Classy, classy well, I know. Dresses. I see it. If you should follow her on Instagram. You have some rocking clothes. Because I do rent the runway. It's a membership. Oh, oh, I've heard of that. You pay a monthly membership. I should get free clothes for this rent the runway. Yes, you should. Uh, you pay a monthly membership, and then you can rent all dresses. So, like, if a five hundred dollar dress, it's part of my membership. I wear it once, send it back. It's fabulous. Really lovely. She Never was telling us nice about one. this. Um, <coughs> I could not afford to wear all the clothes I wear. Oh my gosh, that'd be my entire salary. Well, when you do, so when you do red carpets, like uh, you don't get stylists. You, so no. you don't get a stylist to help I you. I style myself. Oh. Well, then you have. Oh, per- yes. Then you are the art of perfection. <laughs> 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 no, I just know what brands fit. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you for watching Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network. Be safe, be well. I'll uh, see you in two weeks, October 1st. Thomas John, Psychic Thomas, Psychic, Psychic, what is it? Psychic Medium Thomas John. Yeah. Um, what's the name of his show? Do Back you remember, me. Cheryl? Uh, well, the Thomas John Experience. experience. That's the one the where one he's in the car, right? Right. That's the amazing. That is, yeah, Seatbelt Psychic. Yep. And then well, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Thomas yeah. John Experience. Yeah, oh. he's amazing. I mean, he really is. How I, I, That's how I met Cheryl. Because yeah. Sarah Gilbert, I was looking for a new psychic medium, and Sarah Gilbert said, go to Thomas John. So she actually called him because he's very booked up. And he couldn't fit me in for months and months and months. And now he's your show on two weeks. And now he's in my mm-hmm. show for two weeks yeah. uh, because of Cheryl. So thank Thanks, but, Cheryl. But you know what? Yay. If it wasn't for him not having an open slot, his office recommended Cheryl. Cheryl oh, had been doing my you. readings. And this thank is how you. it's all full circle yeah, now. So is. thank yeah, you. And I am so menopausally mad. <laughs> what is your name, my lovely friend who has been impeccably doing the show this evening? Kamisha. Amisha. Amisha, welcome to Between the Sheets. I hope we didn't embarrass you. I hope you'll no, want to come her back. I saw laughing a few times. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, a girl with taste. <laughs> So thank you so much for sitting here with us and enjoying us, and thank you for so much for taking care of us. I appreciate you, as I appreciate all of you and all of you. So with that, my friends, um, have a beautiful night. Be safe. Be well. I'll be at the Emmys on Sunday. Ooh. And, um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not nominated next year. Um, <laughs> I'll be working my ass off. But in any event, as always, be safe, be well, and namaste. Good namaste. night, everybody. Go Cowboys. Good night. Good night. Tell me when we're off the air. There's the music. Yeah. Are we off? Okay. Oh, there's my cat. Oh my god, there's a second explosion. Really? I can't believe there's a little bit. Oh dear.